Fleetwood Wilderness 280 BHS here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And I gotta say, this is a uh, this is a nice used camper. Um, you know the uh, your your old true Fleetwoods, uh, your your wilderness prowlers like that. They're uh, unfortunately they're starting to get a little old. Some of them now, and uh, you know with age just comes normal wear and tear but this one has really stood the test of time and it's just a prime example of like Fleetwood was just far and away the king of camping for so long um, you know nicer things like they have an extended diamond plate up front to help you know shield stone deflection and whatnot uh, the uh, you know the bigger deep slides that weren't super common back then I did notice a little stress fracture up here in the fiberglass at the corner I do see some sealant on it looks like they've gone over that I didn't detect any soft spots inside as a result of any potential leakage, but as always with any used camper, the best advice I can give anyone is come out, put your own hands on it, form your own opinions, you know. Don't take the word of a guy whose paycheck depends on your business. You have to put your own hands on it and use your own judgment. That's the hardest part of being a buyer is you have to, at the end of the day, really decide you know, what's 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 the best unit for my money, what's the best feature, what's the best condition. On a used RV though, you just gotta put your hands on them. That being said, it's really the only little defect I can find. This has been well kept and it's in good shape. Uh, you can uh, see where they actively, preventatively, uh, you know, updated their seals. You know, these uh, the sealing material that they use in these, it stays pliable and it has to be pliable. It can't be uh, uh, stuck and rigid because this trailer twists and wiggles going down the road pretty violently actually. It'd be surprising if you actually watched it. Uh, it stays pliable with uh, special oil compounds. Well, uh, when those oils dry up, they, uh, you know, they become brittle and that's when they fall apart and you get leaks. But you can see where they actively, preventatively had resealed things. Now this is cool. This is a Jai gigantic bunkhouse storage garage. The way it works, this lower bunk folds up out of the way. You see that there's that strut there to help hold it open and it creates this huge storage area. Now what is just glorious is the fact that uh, the good people at Fleetwood gave us a very large door right here. A lot of manufacturers have a feature like this but they make it a small door. This big door allows you to load things like giant folding chairs, maybe a, a barbecue grill or the kids bikes and still have room inside. This is also a really good area to kind of see the materials that are used in putting this together. This is all plywood. This isn't particle board and press board and chip board. They use good stuff putting this together and that's why this RV is really still here and still around. Um, these are definitely not the stock wheels that came on this RV. These are some good looking modern uh, wheels here. So I gotta believe at some point they've updated the tires though. That's just conjecture at this point. I haven't physically gone and talked to the guy who took this on trade or asked the, uh, the, uh, the original owners. I like the bigger handle here and that's another area where Fleetwood was just ahead of their time. It's nicer having that bigger stuff in there. Uh, let's uh, step inside. The uh, interior is extremely spacious, and I think it feels even more so because right next to the entry door, you have all of this wide open walking space. And it leads you, uh, you notice that there's linoleum flooring from the entryway all the way through the kitchen and the bathroom. You only see carpet in two places. You see a little strip of carpet in front of the slide because you need a little carpet in front of a floor flush slide. Otherwise you'd grind into your linoleum. And in the, in the bedroom so that your feet aren't cold when you wake up. But I mean, all in all, despite being used, this is in great shape. You know, you can tell that they sat on the sofa a little bit, but it's really not broken down and beaten down. I also noticed it was not really sun faded, which is important because this RV was built before, you know, the, the super UV tinted windows. And it still looks brand new inside, basically, because it has the two section day and night shades. So you have as much light or as much privacy as you prefer anytime you want it. Now because this uh, window here is full boxing, it has both valances and lambrequins, you can pull those shades down and have 100% privacy in here. So if I step back and really give you the full sweep of the living room, you'll see this thing has just an immense living space. What I love about this right here is it's nice and wide open, but they left you a lot of room here. If you want to put a couple bar stools for a little breakfast bar, you can have two people sitting here eating breakfast someone can walk through the door and not trip over each other. The little uh, extension on the countertop, always handy, you know, always nice for that extra little bit of room. Um, and you're seeing nicer cabinet doors, the full hardwood cabinet doors on here, so that these things are definitely made to last. Um, the uh, the stovetop, this is another thing way ahead of their time. This is a recessed 
stove and it's a larger 22 inch stove not the uh, smaller 16 and the stove top cover is designed to give you a flatter space that you can use as more countertop room. And looking at this stove, I can see they cooked a little, not a lot. Um, you have good bunk space in here, good sleeping space. So naturally, you have to be able to feed everybody. So they give you a big pantry right here for a lot of storage capacity. And this, in a stroke of genius, right across from the bunkhouse, they give you a dresser, drawer, and an extra wardrobe. Uh, I mean, you could throw all the kids' clothes and jeans and socks and swimming trunks and everything right here. I love the uh, the floating mirror style medicine cabinet. That just has such a cool look to it. Um, and a big sink down here. They actually give you a big sink where people can wash their hands. Um, this is another area Fleetwood was ahead of their time. They have sort of a split bath. They put the sink right outside the bathroom. So that uh, in a bunkhouse with a bunch of different people, let's say you're sleeping four, five, six people, someone can use, the, say, the shower or the toilet. The other kid can brush their teeth getting ready for bed. No one interrupts each other. And you notice, too, we do have a nicer stool in here with plenty of leg room and uh, you know a, a nicer, taller shower so you can actually stand in here and actually use the shower. Uh, this is what I call a Jack and Jill bunkhouse. I don't know the, if there is a specific word for it, but what that means to me is a double bed on the bottom, a single bed on the top with this extra big wardrobe over here. So if you have a couple different people sleeping, you have a couple different places they can keep all of their stuff, so to speak. Um, here in the kitchen, and this is probably another aftermarket upgrade, which I like seeing. I like seeing that people were willing to invest money in their trailer. That means they were willing to maintain it as well. Uh, they have the bigger Creative Breeze style fan up here. And if uh, you're dry camping or you just want some fresh air, turn off the AC, open all the windows in this, and uh, kick on that fan, and you're going to get just an awesome breeze rolling through. Big windows in that slide out. Holy cow. Um, the Entertainment Center. It is nice that they installed uh, a, a, a pretty sharp little flat screen in here, and it's on a nice swing arm. They've actually put some decent money into this. This isn't the $20 Walmart swing arm, although there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not made for a TV this size. So you see you can easily point any direction you want in the living room. Now, um, CD uh, stereo built in standard, but you see they left you plenty of room. If you want to bring along, say, a satellite unit or a DVD player, Bluetooth, or, or Blu-ray, rather, anything. I mean, they left you plenty of room for it with easy access to power outlets. And I pulled this panel off here to show you. Someone added aftermarket, uh, again, a very nice uh, sound system in here. There's a big Jensen surround sound uh, system with a subwoofer right there, so you probably get some really good sound in here. Now, up in the front bedroom, a couple things to point out. There is a, oops, it's, it's uh, locked down, sorry about that, but there is a sliding pocket door. Obviously, it locks so it doesn't uh, flip around in transit. Um, you have windows on both sides of the bedroom and notice that I don't have any lights on in this camper and look at all of the ambient light on an overcast day filtering into this thing. It's because you have windows for cross ventilation on both sides. Now notice here they specifically made this wardrobe right here a little shorter uh, but because the trailer is taller and has more of a blunt front nose they can get away with that and you can still hang clothing in here. But there are power outlets right up next to your head on both sides of the bed so if you got uh, you know, cell phone chargers or CPAP machines and all that stuff, you are all set. Um, power outlets all over the place. Looks like gas and electric water heater.